Last time we talked about how forms are used to gather data and send to the, ser the server to be processed. Um, and what this allows for is this allows for dynamic websites. In other words, instead of pages that look the same regardless of who is logged in or when they're logged in, dynamic websites are made specifically for the request that requests them. So in other words, instead of having predefined web pages out there, you have scripts. And scripts are little programs that look at a variety of different factors. And those factors can include um, data from a database. It can include things such as a time of day. It can include things such as the platform that the user is coming on, that is whether they're coming on on a mobile device or a desktop device, whether their uh, computer is, uh, is an Apple or a Windows machine, and so on. It can look at all these different factors, the location of the person, their, their general location based on the IP address, that is. And it can look at all these things and it can come up with um, a page custom for that request. So. Sometimes when you go to a download page, for example, to download some software, it's smart enough to show you the link for your particular machine. So in other words, if I visited on a Mac, it would, it would show me the Mac download. Um, versus if I wa was on a Windows machine, it would show me the Windows download. And we saw examples last time of how Google showed us, if we Googled uh, Italian restaurants, we got uh, a list of Italian restaurants in our area. All right, so it took into account our location. So another fundamental way by which um, pages are customized are, are based on um, information from a form. So a Google search, search is based on what the user has put on the form. Um, and if we look at advanced search in Google, we'll see that there's a lot of other pieces that you could supply to Google, a lot of other pieces of data that you could supply to Google. So let's bring that up here. And if I go to where is advanced search hiding? Let me Do a search for something. Um, search for rabbits. All right, here's advanced search. So, there are other things that can be included in addition to text boxes, and some of these are like, for example, drop downs. Um, what we see here. Um, let's do an image search. And let's see what the advanced search looks for that. All right. We're going to use this as um, an example. And so we could look and say we want to see only large images of rabbits. And we want to see ones that are in black and white. And click advanced search, and you'll see that now there's a whole bunch of other stuff on the query string. And that way we customized what we sent to the server as far as what we wanted to see, and therefore it gives us the results that are more closely attuned to what we're actually looking for. So, again, we're not going to reverse engineer this one, but what we're going to do is we're going to make up our own example. And we don't have a server-side script to send it to, but um, you get the idea from the last time that, that uh, you can send the data to a server-side script and it can be processed. And what's important um, on the server-side script is the name of the field. All right? so. 
the name of the field is what it's expecting. So for example, for your homework assignment, um, I specify the names that things should be. Well, that should be the name of the form element that does it. And part of your job is to decide what form element is best for a particular thing. So for example, size of pizza, small, medium, and large. Would that be better as a text box or would that be better some other way? It's your job to decide that. All right, let's look at some of the other things. And we talked briefly about those things last time. They include things such as drop downs, radio buttons, check boxes. There's something called a text area, which is uh, for multi lines of text so that you could put a longer description in if you needed. Um, there are uh, is also a password field where it's not echoed back to the screen. So when you type it in, it uh, doesn't display what you're typing in uh, in the box. Um, these are all the basic form elements. In addition to those form elements, there are um, a number of HTML5 for form elements. And we'll talk about those and about the challenges of using those. Somewhere in here, we're going to talk about two other concepts, and that is the accessibility relating to forms and styling forms. So let's start out um, by creating a simple form, and we don't have a server-side script to, uh, to uh, send it to, so we're just going to send the page back to itself. And that may sound odd, but that's not uncommon in server-side scripting. That's called a post-back, where you enter information on a page, and you send it back to the same page to be processed. So let's take a look and let's create a page that posts back to itself. And if it had server-side scripting, it would, um, it would run and, and do it. I, I don't know what's going on on the camera. It, it is so distracting as I'm, as I'm doing this. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah well, I expect to see like the little subtitles like that that popped up on the Terminator's uh, screen when he was looking. <laughs> well, I hope that this doesn't have the capability to do that. That would be like horrible to end up like pressing the wrong button by mistake and <laughs> seeing like a little little laser beam go out or something. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to make uh, a simple form. And I'm going to be talking about the other form elements as I'm talking about styling and accessibility. So here's our basic shell of a web page, except I forgot the doc type. Shame on me. Monday morning. And I would say while we're at it, we should have language equals English. All right, so I'm going to put my form tag here. And again, a form tag always has an action and a method. The action is the name of the script that is going to process it. The method is whether it's going to be sent via the query string so that it's visible as part of the URL or whether it's going to be sent sort of embedded within the request that gets sent. And, and that is um, known as being part, sent as part of the form collection. And that is post. So I'm going to say method equals get. Because I think at least when we're starting out here, it's useful to see what's actually being sent to the server. So you can take a look at it. So we're going to pass it on the query screen. And I'm going to say action equals pound sign. But we've seen the pound sign before. And that simply represents we're going to send it back to the same page that it's on.
And the one that we looked at last time, the form control we looked at last time is a text box. So input type equals text. Name equals say txt name. Finally, a form typically will have a submit button. If you're a Star Trek fan, the next generation, you can think of this as the make it so button. In other words, when you click the button, that causes the form to submit and the server to do the process and do whatever, do whatever is needed for it. So, um, it has a value, and the value is going to be the name of the button. And it also has a name. All right. So let's save this. This should be pretty much what we had last time, with the exception that we're not actually sending it to a server script. Oops. So here's our form, text box, button. We type in the value in the form and click submit. It sends it back to itself, all right, to, and includes on the query string the values from the form. So it includes the, the, both the name uh, text box with what we put in, which was hello, and it sends also the button with the value of the button that was clicked. Now it's possible to have more than one button, more than one submit button on a form if you have different actions that you want to take. So, for example, you could have um, a page that says edit your information. Then you could have either a save or a delete button. And if you saved it, it would update your information. If you hit delete, it would delete that piece of information. So, the value of the button tells the server-side script, like, which button got pressed. So, it might do something based on if button A was pressed or button B is pressed. It might do something a little different. Kind of like you have on Google, where if you notice on Google's homepage, there's a search, then there's a I'm feeling lucky, where it takes you to the top item in the search, uh, in the search results. All right, we're going to do styling sort of along with this, and we're going to do accessibility along with this, so all rolled up into one. First thing we're going to do is, as we add more form fields here, so like if I added an email address, couple things we're going to notice here. You know, what do those boxes mean, right? There's no text explaining. So we're going to need to put some text explaining what those things are. So I'll go in and I'll put before this name and before this email. All right, so we're a little better off than we were before. However, we still have the problem if there was a bunch of fields, then all strung out on one line isn't going to look very good. So what we're going to do is we're going to think about these forms and realize that forms are really a list of values that you send to the server. So it's appropriate to put them in an unordered list. Okay. Now you might say, well, I don't like the bullet point. I don't want this to look like a, a, a bullet pointed list. That's a different question. All right, that's a different question. Because that deals with not conceptually what it is, but how it looks. So these forms are in fact a list, so we can put them in a list. Now, how we make that list look 
that's an aspect of styling. And so we can style it not to look like a bulleted point list, but to look like uh, a nice form. So let's go in here and I'm going to create inside the form, I'm going to create an unordered list with some list items. And I am totally not using my head today. Should be an LI. There we go. Remember, you only have one list, and you have multiple items in the list. So we have one unordered list. Unordered because really we could put email before name. And, and there wouldn't be anything really wrong with that. So it's not really has to be in a specific order. All right. So we go and save this. And now we see it looks like this. All right. Well. We can imagine that if we have a lot of fields, this is going to be a lot nicer than have them all strung across horizontally. But this still looks kind of clunky. And there's another reason that there's a problem with this. What field is that? What goes there where the cursor is? How do you know that it's name? Yeah, because right next to it is the word name. Yeah, this isn't a trick question or, any, or anything like that. But you know that that's name and not email because because the name is right next to the text box. Excuse me for a second. I actually thought that that was coming on the. Hi. Uh, a lot of weird things are going on, like on the on the back screen. I mean, I can see it like panning around the UP. Um, um. Okay. Well, now we're getting like really cheesy music playing. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I didn't see one. All right, thank you. All right, bye. <laughs> what a Monday, huh? Yeah, what a Monday. <laughs> I wonder anyone watching the video if they have like if they get a sense of that if they can hear the music or or whatever. <laughs> Anyhow, yes. And again, it was not a trick question. You know that it's name because the word name is next to it. You saw that the name is next to it. Well, let's go back to accessibility. What about someone that can't see? How do they know? Well, it depends how they navigate through with the screen reader. They might, for example, use the tab to navigate through. And if they do that, they can't see the word that's next to what they're on. So we have to associate the label with the form control. And we do that with a label tag. Now this label tag comes in handy for another reason. And that is because we can style our label tags a certain way to make these forms look better. All right. So let's go in 
And I'm going to put, I'm going to cheat, and I'm going to put my style code right in my HTML page. You should not do this. I'm just doing this because it's easier for me to explain if um, we're showing everything at the same time. I'm going to first of all put these in a label tag. Now, it's in a label tag and so is email, but still, we haven't associated the label with the text. We've put a label tag in there, but we haven't explicitly said that that label belongs to this text box. How do we do that? We do that through IDs. All right. Usually, I make the ID the same as the name. In this case, I'm going to make it different to, to make it clearer that is the ID. So I'm going to make the ID to this txt name ID. We then put on the label tag an attribute that says for. And in that, we put the ID of the form control so that that matches that. And then the screen reader knows that this label is associated with this form control. So it's basically the... Right. It's basically what you do. Exactly. Exactly. Do note, however, that we have two things. We have a name and an ID. All right. And we have to do that because the name is used for one thing, the ID is used for something else. All right. Uh, again, it would be nice if we only had to give one thing, but we do have to give two. So the name is what the server is going to see. The ID we're going to use for the label, and we're going to also use for styling. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to put in a label for this one. And I'll put in ID equals and now our page is accessible to where a screen reader can access it. Now, if we notice we look at it in the browser, we don't see anything really different at all. So we're not really Not really doing anything that is messing up the way the form looks for people that don't have a, a visual impairment and uh, that are seeing this page uh, through or accessing this page through a screen reader. Now, here's where we can go in and we can make um, some styling things to make our form look look a little better. First thing I want to do is I want to get rid of those bullet points. Right? Those bullet points are ugly. All right? They don't really look good in this form. So I can get rid of those by saying that my unordered list, list style type done. Now we'll get rid of the bullet points. You can use this to give other things other than bullet points if you want. Now, notice how these things are like not lined up properly. Let's make it bigger. Oh, unfortunately, making it bigger doesn't show it. Let's put a different word in here. Let's put address.
All right, notice how that kind of looks sloppy. It'd be nice to even that out. How could we make it so that all these things aligned? That's a good question. Um, the reason that the text box appears right next to this is they're both inline elements. All right? So, the labels are of variable length, right? I mean, the labels are as long as the word is. So, name is four letters, email is five letters, address is seven letters. So, that one's the biggest one. The other two are smaller. Um, what we could do is we could put a width on those, all right? A width on a label. Let's see what that will do. Doesn't do anything. Why not? I kind of gave the answer a minute ago. Names all lined up. Well, they are all lined up, but, but I gave them a width of a certain size, and yet that width didn't seem to take. Why not? Well, one thing we can do to debug this is we can put some color here. reason that the width didn't matter is because these are um, inline tags. So we want to treat them as inline block tags and then we can assign a width. Remember, there are certain attributes in the CSS box model that you cannot assign to a inline element and among these are width. So I can go and say display inline block. That keeps it as an inline tag, but it gives you the ability to set some of the attributes that are normally only available on block tags, such as the width. And now notice how those things, if I gave these a background color, you'll see that they're all the same size. Now I can do this one better. I can actually line these up so that so that the colon lines up over here. And I can do that by, instead of by default, text align being left, I can make text align right. And now we have the form lining up that way, which again looks a lot better. Now, what about the button? Yeah. Button isn't centered at all. All right. I'm not sure if we talked about this, but there's an alternate way of setting styles other than the HTML tags, and that is via the class or the ID. All right. I can assign an ID or a class to an element. And then I can 
set the style of everything that has that class or everything that has that ID. What's the difference between class and ID? An ID is when there's only one thing on the page that you want to do this to. A class is where there are many things that you want to treat the same. So for example, if I had a warning on my page, if, if I was a prescription drug manufacturer and I had a warning on my site, there's going to be warnings all over my site about the side effects and what not to do with this medication and so on and so forth. I might want to style all those warnings the same way to make them stand out so that people really can see them. All right? And in doing that, I want it to be consistent so that if I did a warning with uh, red text on a yellow background and a red border, that anywhere I, the user saw that on the page, they'd know that that was a warning. So I could put all my warnings in a paragraph or something like that and call that, give that paragraph a, a class of warning. And then I could create a style rule for warning. In this case, I'm, I want to just do, deal with one specific thing, that last LI. That last LI, I want the text to be centered. So what I can do is I can go into, and I can give an ID to this. to this LI. And then the way that you give a style to something with an ID is you put a pound sign in front of it. All right. Now, why did it do that? Well, yes, it's, it's lining based on the UL, which is based on the form. Both the UL and the form tag are block tags, which means that by default, they have a width of 100%. So, notice as I move this, it goes like that. I can put a few different widths in here, and I could say width... 600 px, or let's do width 400 px, min width 400 px. And that gives it pretty much the way we want it to look. Maybe that's closer still to this. If I put a border around the form, it'll make it even clearer why it's spaced the way it is. I give it a background color.
do that to the UL instead because it's the UL that I gave the width to. Then I could do things like give some padding. All right. And we're getting the form to look something closer to what we'd want it to look like. All right, so sty that's styling of forms. All right, um, next we're going to do a drop down. The drop down does not use a uh, input tag. All the other form or, or the other form controls that we looked at so far use an input tag. A drop down uses a select tag with a series of options. So, let's go and let's make a drop down for major. It also is going to have a label. It is also going to have a name because, again, that's what it's going to be called when it gets sent to the server. But instead of an input tag, it's a select tag. You're giving a list to the user to select from. And you're giving a list of options. I'll only put a couple of choices in here, but you could have as many as you wanted. In fact, typically you use a drop down if you have a whole bunch of choices, because that saves you space on the screen, because you only see the full list when the user clicks on it. Make it a little wider. All right. So now notice that we have a drop down where we can choose among the list of valid choices. Now, if you notice with this drop down, notice a few things. Number one, it has a label just like the other thing does. And the label ties to the ID just like it did before. Not an input tag, but there's a select tag. And the select tag defines a list of options. It has a name and it has an ID. The ID is used for the label. The name is used to that's what the value that's going to be sent to the server. And I'm going to change it to DD for drop down. Now notice that when I submit this form to the server, up on the query string we see CISS. Notice we don't see computer information systems. Associated with each option, there's a text and there's a value. The value is what gets sent to the server. 
the text is simply to allow the users to see and understand the values. Oftentimes, applications like this are connected to a database. All right? And therefore, um, it needs to match what is stored in the database. So the script that does the processing here might depend on CISS being CISS. Yet someone coming in that doesn't know all the abbreviations might not understand what CISS is, so you put a full description. So for each option, there is the description of the option, and then there's a value that actually gets sent back to the server. Now, I could actually do the same thing in a radio button. Again, you don't need a radio button and a drop down for this, but These are two alternatives, so I'm going to show both of them just to give you an idea. Radio buttons are where when you click on it, it selects your selected option and it disables everything else. Now this is one case where the ID and the name of the radio button are going to be different. And that is because the name is what links these radio buttons together. The name is what makes it so that if you click on one, the other ones get unselected. The ID is going to be used for, again, our label. So I'll go label for Label for DD, or I'm sorry, RB, CISS. Computer Information Systems. And then each of the radio buttons will have its own label to identify what that is. Sort of like you have with the drop down where you have the value and the option.
So we go and save this. I'm going to probably need to make the form wider. I do because that's kind of confusing the way it is. So let's go and let's just take out the width on my UL. And the border and the color and all that. And the appearance of this is a little messed up. All right? And we'll analyze that on Wednesday, why that is. But what I want, want, do want to demonstrate is as I click on one radio button, as I click off it and click another radio button, the original radio button gets unselected. So you can only select one item at a time with a radio button. What ties them together is the name. So radio buttons that have the same name work together. So if I were to call this something else, if I, and I change the name of the second radio button to something else, then it's no longer going to work like a radio button. All right. So you have to make, be sure that when you make a radio button, you define it so that all of them have the same name. All right. Next time, we're going to do a little more on styling because our styling is a little off on this. We're going to look at a couple other fields for forms, uh, checkbox, text area, maybe password. Um, then we're going to look at some things specific to HTML5 and we'll talk about using them and what you need to do to make sure that even browsers that don't support XML5 don't have a fit when you use HTML5 um, form controls. Questions? All right, I have graded your design. I, I think I've graded everything that was turned in for once this semester. So um, please take a look at my comments and let me know if you have any questions. All right, we'll see you up in lab.